Hello Melis, I'm contacting you for a quite special request. We would like to order a painting for the room of a little boy who is going to be three years old and who likes bears. We would like the painting to include symbols of his family's origins, that is Canada, USA, England and Taiwan. I'm also attaching a picture of his room for the color's choice. I really love this message, it's going to be so fun. I'm so pumped. So as you have heard, it will be a painting for a little boy. And to begin, I did a little brainstorming with the different elements of the message my client sent me to see if I can find some ideas that inspire me. So first of all, I'm going to paint a bear. That much was easy to decide. And then we'll see how we can include different elements in the painting to try to build a cohesive composition. I also made a preliminary painting on my sketchbook. This is to give them a general idea of the color palette I have in mind. When it's just for me, I usually do it with colored pencils because it's faster. But when it's for clients, I prefer to show them directly the paints I will use because it's easier for them to see what the painting will actually look like. I chose the sketch I prefer for the coloring, but of course if they choose another one then I will adjust the painting. At this stage I don't do too much polishing, it's still a little rough because as long as I don't know if my clients will like it, I don't want to dive into a too long painting process. But then I'm always a bit afraid that my customers will run away when they see my rough sketch. So I also include one or two paintings that I did before for some other similar commission so that the person can have an idea of the final result on a finished work. So I send all of my sketches to my customers and now let's see. I hope they find something inspiring in my suggestions. So we exchanged a few messages and they were really excited about what I sent them. So I'm super happy, that's super great. Uh, so they chose this composition, which is a bear playing with dragonflies. I will explain later why the dragonflies, because I'm pretty proud of myself on this one. So this is the sketch I'm working with now. And now, time to paint. So when I got their answer, I was really excited because they chose the project that I liked best among the ones I sent them. Well, I like the others too, of course, but I think that if they hadn't chosen this one, I would have kept it in my list of projects because I really, really like it. I started painting the background and at this stage I think of how I will arrange the composition because I will try to direct the eye towards where I want it to go. For example here, I really want the main focus to be the bear's head and the interaction between the bear and the dragonflies. And for this, I will create a much lighter area in the middle and darker edges, and this will give a framing effect that will bring the viewer's eye back to the middle. Also, there will be leaves flying up on both sides, from the bottom to the top, so the brush strokes in the background need to follow this movement to enhance the dynamic effect. Painting the background is super relaxing. You don't need to be super precise and it's quite abstract. Well, I mean, I'm really, really enjoying this process. When I thought about the different symbols that would be included, since they asked me to paint a bear, I chose to paint a grizzly bear. 
That was an easy choice because it's a bear that is so emblematic of North America. It's perfect for the United States and Canada. Of course, I'm going to paint it in my style. I want it to look kind and playful and to recognize that it's a grizzly, I'm going to include some features that will help to distinguish it from other bears. For example, one thing that allows you to recognize grizzlies from afar is that they have a hump on their back. It's a muscle mass that is so developed that it rises above their head when they are on their forelegs. Another feature of grizzly bears is that their forelegs are often darker than the rest of their body and the demarcation is quite sharp and I think it gives them a teddy bear look. I find it really, really cute. To paint the bear, I start by blocking the color areas very roughly to decide where I'm going to put the shadows and the lights. Then, to make the hairs, I use my fan brush. It's very convenient instead of painting each hair one by one. It's much faster and it gives a more natural effect. To make the bear look more friendly, I cheated a little. In fact, for the head, I used image of baby bears as a reference because they have more rounded and softer features. For the pose, I also adapted a little bit. I decided not to paint the clothes because it would have made him look a little too aggressive. So I just painted the little pads so that it makes a big friendly pose. Then I painted the eye of the bear, so it's always a little bit delicate, especially here. I really wanted to give him a gentle and playful look. And finally, I think I managed to do it. And also I outlined the contour in dark brown so that it stands out quite well against the fur. The symbol that was the most challenging for me was Taiwan. And fortunately, biology saved me and I found this species of dragonfly that is endemic to Taiwan. Endemic meaning that it is native to the island of Taiwan and it does not exist anywhere else. And when I saw the pictures of this dragonfly, I found it so fantastic that I really had a crush on it. So I asked my customers before if they were okay with the idea because, well, I love insects, but it's not necessarily the case for everyone. But in fact, they were as enthusiastic as I was, so that's how we opted for the dragonflies. These dragonfly come in a variety of color, from bright red to golden yellow. And given the colors of the painting, I chose the red version, as it's the complementary color of green. It really comes out great. Also, I made three dragonflies in different flying poses to give a more dynamic look. And as they have really magnificent wings, I underlined the shape of the veins with small white reflections in order to make them stand out even from a distance. For the symbol of England, I chose the oak. It was quite an obvious choice because it's the national tree of the country. And also the leaves have a very characteristic shape, so it's easily recognizable even if you're not a botany enthusiast. And while I was at it, obviously I added some sugar maple leaves as a symbol of Canada. Well, it's on the flag, so I couldn't really resist it. When I made the sketch, I didn't want the leaf to be too flat, because otherwise it could look a bit like a herbarium, and I wanted to avoid that. So I drew a lot of leaves in different ways, 
as if they were blown away by the wind and it's not that easy actually it was a very valuable exercise to find out how you can give volume and movement to an object that is basically flat so i drew them curved or folded in half and i'm really glad i did that it shows that even with a very simple subject like oak or maple leaves you can make it very interesting by adding movement. I also try to alternate them to combine the two types of leaves and also I was careful to have them all pointing in the same direction so that you can guess that they are all flying together as if there was a big gush of wind and it follows the movement of the bear's arms. That way, it also reinforces the composition and brings the attention back to the middle of the painting. I painted the oak leaves in green and of course the maple leaves in red. For the oak leaves, as the background is already green, I used an almost neon green with yellow reflections to really reinforce the color and make it stand out. And on the contrary, for the red leaves, I actually softened the color. In fact, I wanted it to be bright, but not as much as the dragonflies, so that it would not become more important than the main subject. So I added some green to the blend. As it's the complementary of the red, it will really soften the color. And the funny thing is that you can't even see it. If you look at the color of the leaves on the white background, they look almost brown, but the same color on the green background looks red, and there is no question about it. As usual, I prefer to deliver my originals framed, especially for gouache, because it's quite sensitive, so for me it's reassuring. Besides, if there are small adjustments to make, I have the proper tools, I can do it right away. And for the customers, it's much more convenient. They don't need to find a frame of the right size, so they can hang it right away the day they receive it. And Honestly, when it's for a child, well, when you have a three-year-old child, you really don't have time to go chasing a frame. And here is the final result. I really, really enjoyed this project. As much the painting part as all the planning to integrate all the references in a composition that works well. If you watched the video until the end, put a thumbs up to tell YouTube you like this painting. Thank you very much for being here today. Don't hesitate to tell me what you thought of this painting in the comments. And I also recommend you these videos with even bigger projects that I made, if you want to go watch that as well. Until next time, I wish you lots of inspiration and I will see you very soon. Bye.